In this video we're going to be following steps on how to create a snail cam using parametric equations in Fusion 360 for activity 412 cams make the world go round. First off we're going to start with creating a new component. We're going to call this the snail cam. Sometimes you also hear it called a drop cam. And we're going to start off with our parameters table. So our parameters table, we're going to define a new param uh, parameter. Here we'll do like our no normal naming convention, DIA. Our expression, we're going to go with one inch. And our comment, we will call this the nominal diameter. And we'll say OK. I'm going to add another parameter, as we've done in previous videos. So we'll call this axle DIA. We'll utilize a quarter of an inch and we'll make sure that this has the axle diameter in there. Our third parameter, adding in the thickness, THK, 3 sixteenths, and this is going to be the cam thickness. And we're going to go ahead and say OK. Say OK to close out the parameters table. I'm going to create a sketch, and I'm going to choose the front plane. From here, I'm going to create two circles. So both, can, also known as concentric, and I'm going to go with the various sizes. So that means they share the same center point, and they're both constrained to the origin to make that happen. I'm going to select both of these by holding Control. Either you can toggle construction here by clicking that icon. You can also right-click and choose Normal slash construction as well and as well. You can also press the X key and then you'll want to left click off in the white space around the, on the grid to deselect those. Our first order of business will be to sketch dimension on this outside. This is going to represent our diameter, so DIA, hit enter. The second one here is going to represent DIA divided by 2. So that's going to provide us with our measurement. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here to get these values going. And I'm going to say cancel to get off of that dimension tool. To start off with our snail cam, we're going to the only real kind of defined geometry when you start to look at this that really follows X and Y axes is going to be the vertical line up here at the top. So if I go through and just touch the origin, I'll have lines and when I click, I'm going to connect the two circles. And the one thing I'm going to go ahead and do, even though I have a vertical constraint, is I'm going to use a horizontal vertical. I'm going to choose the end point of the line, and I want to choose the origin. When I do that, it'll turn that line black, and I'm not going to be able to move it. So even though the line is vertical, I still would have been able to draw it, or drag it, excuse me, about the screen. What I'm going to end up doing here is I'm going to use, in order to start drawing in the curves, for our shape is I'm going to set in some various points along our along our uh, design here so then that way we can do so. We do need to take a look at uh, writing some equations so when I start to look at our values you'll see that um, a lot of times it's a lot easier we can use the naming conventions that we created or we can use what designations they're giving so it's usually followed with a D and a number. So in this case the diameter is D4. The second one here is going to be as we take a look you can double click on these and then kind of move your mouse over here is going to be D5. So I'm going to be using those designations to write some equations. I'm going to hit the drop down on create and choose point and I'm going to place a point somewhere about on the outside here the way the snail cam works I'm going to move counterclockwise. So here about from the inside circle to the outer circle, about 25% in. Again, we're just approximating. We're going to place a point there. I'm going to go about half on this one along the y-axis. I'm going to go about halfway, 50%. And on this one, I want to go about 75% from the inside circle to the outer circle. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use some geometric constraints. Horizontal, vertical. I'm going to choose this point for it represents our 25% horizontally constrain it to our origin. I'm going to do the 50% to the origin and the 75% to the origin. So that way those will be locked into place. So you'll notice I'll be able to drag along 
for these or I'll be able to drag up and down, but I can't move in the X direction. And here I can't move in the Y direction on either one of these because now they're constrained with the origin. So in order to fully constrain them, we're going to write some equations. So I'm going to go ahead and do a sketch dimension from the origin. So as I look to kind of do that from the origin to our 25% location, I'm going to write within our box our equation. So here we're going to take a look at um, our circle. So this is going to be D5. We're going to go ahead and put plus, maybe I'll space that out here, D5 plus, and in parentheses, D2, or uh, excuse me, D4, minus D5 times, so using the asterisk key, 0 0.25 and then backslash two. So you're going to notice this is going to have um, a large amount of uh, text in that one box. So if I open up the parameters table, which if I click on solid here and choose parameters, you're going to be able to see my snail cam. Here's the equation. So D5 plus taking D4, uh, the difference between D4 and D5 Again, here's D4 and D5 being noted, and multiplying it by 25% and then dividing it by 2 in order to go through and put that there. So here's the one thing that I can do, is I'm going to click inside this box, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say Control-C on my keyboard to copy this equation. So that way, and I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And one thing that I can do, I'm going to go back to the Sketch tab here, is let's go ahead and let's place these dimensions. And I'll show you another way that you can do that. So either one of two ways, you can actually click and like paste that into there. I'm going to leave that alone, and I'm going to hit Enter. And I'm going to go ahead and do it the same for the 75%. Okay, I'm going to drag this down just a little bit more. I'm going to hit Enter. Now I'm going to go back to that solid tab, and I'm going to open up the parameters. So again, Control-C. I'm going to go down to the one below. I'm going to Control-V, and the only one I'm going to change here is I'm going to change instead of 25%, I'm going to change that to 50%. This one here, paste, and instead of 25%, I'm going to go to 75% and hit Enter. And when I say OK, you're going to see it's going to automatically locate the points where we need them. From here, I can take uh, Arc Tool. So I need to go back to my Sketch tab, and I can use a three-point arc. So you can also go to Create and find that three-point arc. Choosing from the end of our line there to our point. And again, we're just going to kind of approximate the curves here. We're going to clean this up here in a second. Click this point, connect to here, here to here. And then this one, we will connect to the end, and it'll be somewhat kind of like this. Okay, so here's our profile of our snail cam. We can use the tangent geometric constraint and go with clicking on this curve to this one to make it tangent, this one to this one, this one to this one, and then this last one is tangent with the outer circle. And what you'll see is this is going to go through and fully constrain our, our cam. The last thing we need is to put a circle in the middle and go ahead and place a sketch dimension this one is going to be representing our axle diameter. And I can hit enter. I'm going to go ahead and say finish sketch. Go ahead and put this into the home position, extrude. Choosing our cam profile, using our THK designation. And there, hitting enter, we'll go through and place our snail cam in there as well. So again, to check the parameters, I like to go through. I'm going to collapse these here. And then I'm going to kind of minimize the window. There we go. And then that way we can see the effect. So right now, this is at a one-inch nominal diameter. Just to double check everything's working well, I'm going to go to two. And there's what happens. Everything stays proportional. Everything scales up. If I go to two and a half, there's our cam. If I go down to 1.5, 
there's what will happen. So everything's working perfectly, and this is what we can use in order to create our snail cam. So take a look at the next video, which will look at the final cam being a heart-shaped cam in Fusion 360.